Amen. Let's stand together. Why don't you greet somebody? I know you're talking and visiting. Shake hands with somebody you have not had the privilege of greeting yet. Tell them you're glad to see them in church today. Amen. This is the day the Lord hath made. Amen. We're so glad all of you are here today. And uh, we're so glad to have all of our guests here this morning. Let's welcome our guests today. Give them a warm welcome. We're glad you're here. Be sure and, and uh, make them feel welcome today. We got a number of folks that are out this morning, whether they're sick or traveling. We got a number of folks that are not here. But we're glad that the Lord is here. Amen. How many is glad the Lord is here? And if the Lord is here, anything can happen. Amen. He can change your life. He can redirect your steps. He can lift your burden. Amen. He can bind up the brokenhearted. I know he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Somebody say amen. amen. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer before our choir sings today. And we're going to ask the Lord to have his way. Would you join me as we pray together today? Lord, thank you for this day that we have. Lord, the privilege we have to be gathered together with your people. Oh, Lord, you didn't have to allow us the privilege to be here today, but, Lord, you woke us up this morning. We're here today, Lord. I thank you for the privilege of drawing together with your people into your presence. God, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we're going to have today, Lord, to hear your word to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God, I pray, Lord, you speak to each one of us collectively, oh God. Let it affect our lives, Lord. Let it change us, our direction, our path. Lord, let us to change our, our eyesight today. Let us lift our eyes unto you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, to realize that you can do all things and nothing is impossible with you, oh God. Lord, touch every heart here today. In the name of Jesus, bind us together to see your work done, and we give you praise for it. Amen. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a good hand clap of worship today. If you've come to worship the Lord, amen. If you've come to, to magnify Jesus, Lord, we worship you today. Lord, we worship you today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell him I'm here to worship the Lord. God bless you as you're seated. The choir's going to sing today. You worship with them.
a miracle working God. Anybody ever seen him move a mountain? I said, anybody seen him move a mountain? Anybody ever been up against a Red Sea and the Lord parted the waters and he made a way where there seemed to be no way? Hallelujah. He deserves our praise today. He deserves our adoration today. He's a good God. I don't know what happened since last Sunday. 
but he's a good God. He's still on the throne today. He's the same God today, yesterday, and forever. I give him praise today. I give him praise today. We worship him. He is worthy. He does not change. He's the same God today as he was before there ever was an earth or a river or a sunset or a sunrise. He was the same then. He's the same now. If he can speak into chaos and create what we see and experience, I want you to know he can speak into your darkness today. Oh, praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost here today. Oh, let's reach out to the Lord one more time. I just feel his spirit. He's trying to tell us something today. He wants to speak mightily in our hearts today. Lord, you're the God that can do anything. Nothing is impossible with you. Oh, Lord, there's nothing too hard for you, God. Oh, I praise you, God. I worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Lord's able, isn't he? Amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, this is where we believe he not only can move spiritual mountains, but he can move physical sickness. He can take care of disease. Amen. I mean, no, he's the God that heals us. Amen. Well, let's pray for Dennis Hodge. This is Sister Joyce's son. Let's pray for him. He needs healing. Darren Snyder has a brain uh, brain cancer, needs prayer today. Sister Becky Wilgos is having a knee replacement this Tuesday. Let's pray for her. Brother Dale Burner is sick today. Text me this morning, needs prayer. There's a number of folks that are still uh, needing prayer that will appear on the screen. Their names are there for us to remember, to call their name and pray for them today. And uh, we want to take time this morning. If you're sick and you need prayer this morning, we invite you to come. Amen. And we will pray for you today. I believe the Lord's able. How many know God can do the impossible? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's take these requests to the Lord today and ask him to move in each one of them. Lord, as we open this service, God, as we come to worship you, Lord, not only those that are here today, but those that are at home today that are sick, Lord, those that are joining us uh, by way of the live stream today, God, that are battling pain, that cannot be here today, God, I pray you would touch them, touch Brother Joe Beal today, strengthen him and Sister Pat, oh God, touch Sister Becky, uh, Betsy, and Brother Greg. Lord, I pray you would move in their lives today. God, touch Sister Betsy. Give her a speedy recovery from this surgery, Lord. I believe you, God. Touch Brother Dale Burner today, Lord. In Jesus' name, this strep throat, God, this congestion. You're able this morning. Touch Dennis. Lord, I know you're the healer of all manner of disease. Lord, I pray you touch him, God. Lord, you're able, Lord, to do all things well. You're able, Lord, to show in your power. You're able to show in your glory, oh God. I pray you touched in us this morning, God. We bleed your blood upon his life, Lord. We pray, God, Lord, that the price you paid for his healing, Lord, would be appropriated in his life this morning, God. Touch him in the name of Jesus. Lord, have your way in him, oh God. Do your work, oh Lord. We reach out to you, Lord, to touch him in your name. Touch Darren Snyder, Lord, I pray, God, that his brain cancer would begin to dissolve, Lord, that you would move every tumor, move every lesion. Lord, you're able to erase it, God. You're able to do a work, God, that the doctors cannot do today. In the name of Jesus, oh, I believe you, Lord, those... Lord, they cannot be here today. Strengthen them. Touch them. God, I pray you bind up their hearts, their minds, their spirits, and their bodies. In the name of Jesus, we give you the praise and we give you the glory. Oh, God, you are a healer. Oh, I love you, Jesus, and I worship you, oh, God. I give you glory today, Lord. I give you praise today, oh, God. You are prayer answering God. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And everybody said, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
Praise God. I know there may have been some that have come in since we started. So let's take one more minute, turn to somebody uh, that you haven't greeted, and tell them I'm glad you're here with us today in church. Amen. So glad to have all of you here today. It's God's will for you to be in church. Amen. It's God's will for you to be in church today. Somebody say amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul told us that we should not forsake assembling together. So when you say, well, I really want to know what the Lord wants me to do. I'll tell you what he wants you to do. He wants you to be gathered with his people. Amen. We know that. So we're glad that you are here today. It's his will. You have obeyed his will by being in church today. And we're glad you are here. Amen. I'll let you be seated for a moment. We're going to make a few announcements today. Uh, we're going to get ready to receive our offering today. Remember uh, today, uh, uh, the announcements for today, there'll be some that appear on the screen behind me. Uh, adult uh, Sunday school books and devotional books. These are, uh, these are uh, resources that will help you connect what we hear on Sunday morning and uh, make it last all the way through the week. There are devotions in there, the things for you to... Uh, may be accomplished through the week and through each day and they'd be a great blessing to you those books are available for purchase in the lobby uh, or you can see sister Teresa Rainey uh, about that tonight at 6 p.m. is our annual business meeting we encourage the membership of the church to be here and uh, we want to make you aware of that uh, today is building fun Sunday God is building tomorrow's somebody say amen and we give the Lord praise for uh, what he's doing and uh, I, I know I mentioned this usually unless I forget the piece of paper in my office but on the third Sunday of, of the month uh, we tell you how God has blessed us and in the last uh, 30 days we have received uh, almost $17,000 in the building fund amen. and that is amen thank God for that <laughs> praise the Lord for a grand total of $682,377.13. Amen. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. So, uh, amen. We're, we're just believing God to, to uh, supply the need, and not only that, but open the correct timing for us to move on forward. Somebody say amen. Amen. Our ushers are coming. We're going to receive our offering today. They are here in the front to serve you. And uh, Brother Paul to your left, Brother Terry to your right. So you, we don't let you choose which usher you give to. If you're on this side, you'll pass Brother Paul uh, on the outside, and you'll come back down the inside aisle. And same for Brother Terry. These are good men. Amen. And uh, they are given an account. They, they tell me after church what everybody gives. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> they don't pay attention. They just hold the basket out and let you give cheerfully. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> but we know who is watching, <laughs> and that's the Lord. And uh, we give to him today, and because of him and for him. Amen. Somebody say amen. Let's stand together again. Lord, we thank you for this day, the opportunity we have to give. Bless your people today. Bless those that have to give. And I pray you help us give with a cheerful heart in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. God bless you as you come to give. Worship with our worship team today.
lift him up. He's worthy. Lord, we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Lord, we sing praise to you today. We thank you for your presence here, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for every blessing. And we give you glory for it.
let's just take a minute and do that. God, you're worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, God. You are mighty, God. Hallelujah. He is here. you up right now. We give you praise, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you would lift your hands with me today, let's just give him all the glory and all of the praise. Oh, come on, lift up your voice to our God. Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. You are mighty in battle. Through every situation, God, you are victorious. You are my comforter. You are my peace. You are my strength. Lord, you make a way when I don't see the way. God, I can trust in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
let's give him praise. I love you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, all over this building, let's give him the praise that he deserves today, Lord. We exalt you. Come on, when we begin to lift him up, God inhabits the praises of his people. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, Lord, you are worthy today. Praise God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. In every service, you know, we're expecting God to have his way and do his work. And um, it's no different in this one today. We're expecting God to do his work. Somebody say amen. And his work is in the hearts and minds and souls of men and women that are here today. I believe he wants to tear down walls. He wants to open somebody's eyes. I believe he wants to dispel, spare the darkness and, and move the darkness out of the way. I believe God wants us to see things clearly today. Amen. And, and uh, from the very outset up until this point, you know, when you're, you're, you're praying and seeking God through the week about uh, what to feed the flock of God, you know, the food that you're going to put out today, uh, when you seek the Lord, uh, you're not sure what kind of environment you're going to be in. But, uh, you know, it's amazing how God puts it all together. Amen. And he's speaking to us already uh, in the songs that we've sung. Amen. In the atmosphere uh, that we've experienced in the presence of the Lord today. Amen. I believe God is here. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 And uh, the Lord is good. Uh, we pray for those. we got a number of folks, as I mentioned today, that are out. A couple of things. Or one, we're excited about Sister Brittany Dury's sister is getting baptized today in Herrick. And so the, the Dury family is all up there to celebrate that baptism. So we're excited about that. Amen. And pray for Sister Jean. Her mother, her mother my mother-in-law's 80th birthday is today. And so I went yesterday. Uh, so that I wouldn't be the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. Uh, I went yesterday and we had dinner together and, or yesterday evening. And uh, uh, so uh, be praying for them today. They're going to have a big time celebrating 80 years for my mother-in-law. She said, I'm not, she didn't believe she was 80. And uh, she just began to, you know, there's times where she kind of said, uh, I won't, won't say argues about it. But she was pretty vehement about, uh, I'm not 80. And Cheryl said, well, Mom, uh, this year I'm turning 60. And so her mom said, well, I guess I am 80 then. <laughs> so it's all relative. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so be in prayer for them today. I know they're going to have a great time together. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we're turning to the book of Isaiah chapter 6. And we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Uh, as I read these verses, you'll recognize that what the choir sang about, uh, about him being in control and able to do anything, and, and our praise team talking about our worship, and we live to worship the Lord. We exist to worship and magnify him, amen, to walk with him. And in Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, uh, it states this, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. Everybody say that phrase with me. Each one had six wings. Let's say it again. Each one had six wings. With twain or two, he covered his face. And with two, he covered his feet. And with two, he did fly. Somebody say amen. amen. I want to preach from that phrase out of Isaiah chapter 6 verse 2 where the writer said each one had six wings. Let's say that one more time. Each one had six wings. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this day. And Lord, we give you praise for the people of God, every person that is here today. We ask you that you would have your way, Lord, in this service, in this place. Let us hear your word in Jesus' name, and we give you praise for it. And everybody said amen. amen. 
God bless you. You can be seated in the name of the Lord. Isaiah uh, is one of those privileged people I'll mention here in just a minute. Those that have been privileged to see the Lord, those that had been privileged to be uh, in his throne room. And the Bible says he notices not only the Lord sitting up on a throne, high and lifted up, and that should bring us comfort today. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. That's comforting today. We'll talk more about that here in just a moment. But in the second verse, he notices quickly, moves quickly to above that throne stood the seraphims, our angels, and each one had six wings. Then he begins to describe how these three pair of wings were uniquely uh, designed and uniquely functioning in a different way. Each one of them active, each one of those pair of wings were doing something in the throne room and continued to do something. Uh, the Bible says, Isaiah said he noticed that with one pair, the angel in the throne room of God covered his face. And with another pair in the throne room, above the throne, in the presence of Almighty God, he covered his feet. And with the last pair, this angel flew. Uh, and whether he flew around the throne room, Isaiah notices that this angel uh, functions in this triple capacity. He covers his face, he covers his feet, and then with the last pair, he flies. Now one statement here in Isaiah, he said above, this, uh, above it, speaking of the throne, stood the seraphims. Now we recognize that uh, they are flying, so this word stood has to do with their position uh, of flight in the throne room. They are positioned uh, flying in the throne room, uh, their last pair of wings with which they take flight. I would like to say today that whether you realize it or not this morning, spiritually, you too have six wings. We are in the presence of the Lord and we are in the presence of Almighty God. What a privilege we have to feel what we feel, amen, to experience the presence and the power of God when we are gathered together. You say, well, I'm not sure that's what's going on. Well, uh, then you've got issue not with the mailman, you've got issue with the person that's sending the mail today. And the person that's sending the mail today says in his word that whether two, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in their midst. So I know that it's impossible for him to lie. And I know that if there's two or three here today that are gathered in his name together to worship him, I know that the Lord is here. <laughs> So I am confident that the Spirit of the Lord is here today. <laughs> you know how else I know it is I have been awakened spiritually by the new birth. I've been born again of the water and of the Spirit. <laughs> Amen. That means that the Spirit of a man knows a man, but the Spirit of God knows God. <laughs> I can know certain things about people by the way they're sitting in church. I don't need the gift of discernment to tell today that some of you are in a battle. <laughs> I can tell because I have the spirit of a man. I too am an individual just like you. And you are showing all the signs <laughs> that you're in a battle. <laughs> But I want to tell you, that's not the only thing I have. I have the Spirit of God today. And I know because I have felt Him when I got in this worship service, when He came in this room, the Spirit of God that He put in me lit up like a fire and I could feel Him. How do you know he's here? Because he said he would be here. And because everybody that's got the Holy Ghost knows when he is there. Come on, clap your hands under the Lord. 
Praise God. I would like, I know we, we're not angels. I know that. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, Pastor knows you're not an angel. Amen. Amen. I understand that. Please don't misrepresent what I'm saying. I'm not saying you're all angels today, but I am saying that if we're going to enter into worship, Isaiah sees the throne room, and the Bible says he sees these angels, and they have six wings. And I believe spiritually today that if we're going to really worship God the way he wants us to worship God, we too are going to have to do it with six wings. Rarely have men left this world and seen God. The Bible tells us two of those who did were Isaiah and John, the revelator. There were many things they saw that differed. What Isaiah saw was different than what John saw. But there are many things, there are a number of things that are the same uh, as to what they saw. <laughs> and I love that. <laughs> Uh, the differences are putting in the colors, but what they saw that was the same gives my heart rest because Isaiah in the Old Testament and John in the New Testament, they both saw a throne. <laughs> Now, I know that doesn't do you any good, or maybe you already know all that, and so it's got old hat. It's like eating the same thing for breakfast every day. But I want to tell you this morning, if they both saw a throne, that says to me, somebody is in charge. <laughs> I said, somebody is in charge. There is a throne that is above all things, that is before all things, and will be long after all things are finished. There is a throne that is eternal. <laughs> and they saw a throne. Turn to your neighbor and tell them the Lord's in charge. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't that great? I know we, we, it, was, it was a slow news day. We waited a few, uh, a few days to hear uh, what in the world was flying over our nation at 60 plus thousand feet. Boy, it's quiet now. We, we didn't know what was going on, and I'm not sure we would have known had not a news reporter caught sight of the thing flying across the sky and all of a sudden it hit the news outlets and we watched as the thing made its way. How many of you pulled up the balloon tracker? You wanted to know where it was? Me and Paul. Oh, there's some more of you. I, I, you know, I found out that about the closest it got to us, it went through Cape Girardeau. I don't know if you knew that. It went just south of here, right through Cape Girardeau. If I... Uh, everybody okay? We weren't sure what was going on. We're, I'm not sure. We're still sure of what's going on. Uh, we, we start wondering who's in charge. We start wondering, uh, are they going to tell us what's happening? And I guess we're getting the picture that we're just the sheep led before the slaughter. <laughs> we're the dumb ones. Everybody okay? <laughs> I want to tell you, if you ever wonder about the White House or the State House or uh, the, the Courthouse, I want to tell you there's a throne that's above all of that. <laughs> Isaiah saw it and he said, when I saw that, that heavenly place, there was a throne that got my attention. But not only was there a throne, I'm glad for the next thing John and Isaiah saw, they saw one sitting upon that throne. <laughs> Come on now, I want to tell you. That's not a triple throne. There's not three seats there. There is one throne, and there is one that sits on that throne. Uh, well, somebody give the Lord praise. Now Isaiah is seeing it before Bethlehem. Isaiah is seeing it before Nazareth. Isaiah is seeing it before the manger. Isaiah is seeing it before Calvary. 
Anybody hearing what I'm saying? And when he looks up there before the manifestation of God in Bethlehem, he doesn't see anything but one throne and one sitting on that throne. But John sees it after Bethlehem. John sees it after the birth of Jesus Christ. And he says, I see one throne and one sitting on the throne. And it's the throne of God and the Lamb. I want to tell you who's on that throne today. It is Jesus. Jesus Christ. I'm here to declare to you today that Jesus is the mighty God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the manifestation of God Almighty. Oh, somebody give God praise today. So, oh, I don't, help me, Lord. Their accounts differed. They saw, but they both saw a throne. They saw one sitting on the throne. Somebody say amen. And then they saw these heavenly beings. These angels, seraphims, Isaiah calls them, with six wings. And with two, they covered their face. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. And, and John sees four and 20 elders before the throne. He sees these seraphims. But that's not all he sees. <laughs> Isaiah sees it before Calvary. Isaiah sees it before the blood is shed. <laughs> Isaiah sees it before it is finished. <laughs> And he sees a God that's in control. But John sees it when the blood has been shed, when the sin issue has been finished. And he not only sees a throne and one sitting on it and angels and four and twenty elders. He said, I see a number that I cannot number. And they have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. And they are before his throne day and night. I want to tell you, John saw you and I, the blood-bought, born-again children of God. God, you better make sure you make it there. You want to make sure you're born again of the water and of the Spirit. Oh, let's give the Lord a good hand clap. Praise God. Praise God. The throne is where uh, there is one that reigns in power on that throne. Somebody say amen. John and Isaiah saw it, Matthew 28. 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven. Praise God. Everybody say, in heaven. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. He did not say, All power is given to me in the earth. He said, I've got all power in heaven and in earth. At that moment, Jesus was walking on the earth. And he said, I not only have power here, I have power there. Only God has power in heaven and in earth. A man may have power in the White House. A person may have power in the Senate. The, the mayor may have power, or the, the county board may have power in, in the courthouse. But I want to tell you now that God has power in heaven and in earth. And Jesus said, I have it. I have all power. John saw around that throne a rainbow and a sea of glass. Isaiah saw a train that filled the temple. A train in biblical days was a long piece of material of some kind that the, the victories of a particular reigning king would be written on that piece of garment. And that piece of garment would be paraded down the streets and the, the people of that dominion would sing of the conqueror, would sing of their mighty king. Isaiah saw one on the throne, and he said his train filled the temple. On that train are victories that he had won. I wonder if you are on that train. I wonder if I am on that train. I wonder if Isaiah saw the account of him conquering all my fears. I wonder if Isaiah saw the day that Almighty God would roll my sin away. I wonder if he saw the day he gave me victory over all of my doubts. This is one, the, the, the Bible says Isaiah saw this train filling the temple. It was a long list of victories. I want to tell you today, if he's done it for me, he can do it for you. If he can do it for the one sitting across the aisle from you, that you don't even know their story, 
but they are here today by the grace of Almighty God. (laughs) Sitting in front of you and behind you and around you are testimonies of God's grace. And if he can do it for them, he can surely do it for you. Somebody ought to give him praise for that today. (laughs) Amen. Not only does his train fill the temple, but I want to declare to you today that he's never been defeated. Cancer's never defeated him. Parkinson's has never defeated him. Blood sugar's never defeated him. (laughs) Come on. Cirrhosis of the liver's never defeated him. You say, well, wait a minute. I prayed for him to do something about this or that, but I want to tell you he's never been defeated. The battles he's fought, he's always won. I put my trust in him. Where John saw the beauty of the throne, Isaiah saw the power of the throne. And the Bible says Isaiah noticed that those seraphims were worshiping God day and night. Isaiah said they stood or hovered above the throne. They had two wings with which they hovered. And then two were over their face. And two were over their feet. There are in Isaiah 6, and I'll hurry, there are three aspects of a true worshiper. We find them in the throne room in the seraphims. I believe they are in this room today. Not the angels, but you and I are designed to worship God in this way. I believe today to truly worship God, I too must cover my face. I too must cover my feet and I too must fly this morning anybody hearing what I'm saying all right with two the Bible says Isaiah said they covered their face in other words they were worshiping a God that they could not look upon now the 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 scripture plainly states that they had a covering over their face. That means they did not see him. In fact, in 1 Timothy 6 verse 15, it states which in, in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. And somebody say amen. Amen. It is not possible. It was not possible for those seraphims that Isaiah saw. And it is not possible for us either to comprehend a living God. He is beyond our imagination. He's beyond our furthest faith. He's beyond our furthest impossibility. Many have tried to figure him out. Some have thought of him as a computer, that he is one that if you punch all the right buttons, he will respond. He's one that if you have the right program, uh uh-oh, you do the right things in the program, that it will just somehow mysteriously work. That's the way they know, and they can get what they want. They try to make him a computer that spits out an immediate answer in their moment of need. The problem is, he does not limit himself to your button punching. In fact, if you don't seek him, you'll never find him. In fact, if you don't ask, you won't ever receive. In fact, if you don't knock, you say, well, if he's real, he'll just show up. No, it requires my action. It requires my faith. And I understand that I cannot figure him out. There are people that see him like maybe their rich rich uncle. They think of him as a old senile uncle who's sitting there waiting for us to come sit on his lap and ask him for certain things. 
And if we talk to him just right, he'll respond to us and he'll meet our needs. There are some that see him as a, a great executive. Uh, they think he's someone they are to impress. And if they do certain things and they act a certain way and they perform certain functions that God will be impressed. But I want to tell you, he's above all things. Come on, build all the homes for the homeless, and that's a very important thing. Feed those that are hungry, that's a very important thing. Clothe yourself, that's a very important thing. Walk in modesty and temperance, that's a very important thing. Come away from the world, that's a very important thing. Don't let addiction have power over you, that's a very important thing. But I want to tell you now, God is above all of that. And even though you do all those things, God may not pipe when you when, God may not dance when you pipe he may not sing when you play he's above all of us God won't fit into your shoebox Job said how little a portion we know of him Paul said in 1 Corinthians now we see through a glass darkly, darkly. there are times I have to admit that I haven't seen God that I haven't been able to tell what he's doing or how he's doing it. The Bible tells us that God is above all of our human intellect. In fact, one of the greatest verses in your Bible is John 3, 16. For God so loved. Anybody hearing me? For God so loved. That word so takes that to a dimension far beyond you and I. Some of you have understood how far that word so really reaches because you were broken and busted. Your life was a wreck. You were in shambles and God kept on loving you. <laughs> For God so loved the world. His love goes beyond human reasoning. His love goes to those that you're ready to give up on. His love goes to those that you say are unlovable. Anybody hearing me this morning? Those angels, the first two wings, they covered their face. Someday we will cast our crowns at his feet because we're going to be amazed at how mighty he is. We're going to see how many miracles he really performed in our lives. We're going to see the things he did while we were asleep that we cannot even account for. <laughs> In fact, if you've been here on Wednesday night, I came to a great, great revelation. Uh, isn't that great when you just look in the Word? God just keeps on feeding you. And the Bible tells us when he appears in the clouds, we know when that appearing is uh, going to happen. It's going to happen at the rapture of the church. The dead are going to be raised and we shall uh, be changed in a moment, the twinkling of an eye. And the Bible tells us we're going to meet him in the clouds. And Revelation, John sees him first coming in the clouds, and he notices in the clouds he has a crown. Everybody say a crown. That's one crown. That's singular. It's in the original. It's singular. He has one crown on his head. But the Bible tells us when he comes back to this earth where his feet hit the Mount of Olives, and when his second return to this earth happens, John says, I saw on his head many crowns. Now how does he go from one crown to many crowns? Well I want to tell you one of those crowns will be mine because at the rapture of the church the Bible says we're going to cast our crowns at his feet. And we're going to shout worthy is the Lamb. And when he comes back to destroy the Antichrist and the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord, he's going to have many crowns upon his head. He shall be King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, let's clap our hands to the Lord. In the very first encounter between God, mankind, and evil. Eve's temptation in the garden was to be like God. I want that to settle on you for a minute. 
The first temptation that threw this world into topsy-turvy. The first temptation that brought death and sin into the world was the temptation that you can be like God. She was made to believe that she could rise up into deity and know good and evil. What was her temptation? Her temptation was a lack of reverence. That there is one God. And Eve, you can never be God. I want to tell you today, you may, you may uh, like Jeremiah said, who is he that strives against his maker? You may not like what he is. You may not like what he's doing. But I want to tell you there is one God and you are not it. <laughs> And the devil will tell you that you don't have to honor God and you don't have to reverence God and you can do whatever you want to do. But I want to tell you that brings sin and it brings death. The greatest way for you to draw near to God is to fear him and reverence him and say, God, I want to do what you want me to do. With two, they covered their face. With two, they covered their face. God has a stubborn habit of doing things his way. He chose a man and woman too old to have any children to build an entire nation on. He chose an ark and a few trumpets to bring down Jericho's walls. He chose 300 men and a frightened pessimist by the name of Gideon to conquer the Midianite army. He called a boy off of the shepherd field to defeat a giant in the valley of Elah. And with a rock and a shepherd sling, that giant fell. He made the sun to stand still for Joshua. He used a boy one afternoon with a few dinner rolls and a couple of dried fish to feed 5,000 men I want to tell you God has a way of making a way where there seems to be no way Ephesians 3 now and him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us I want to tell somebody today he can meet your need I want to tell somebody today he can save your alcoholic father I want to tell somebody today he can put your family back together again. I want to tell somebody today God is full of surprises. He answers to no man. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling good. I may just preach a while today. <laughs> he allowed the ark to be stolen by the Philistines. <laughs> Who would allow this precious ark that had those precious things inside of it who would allow this precious ark to be stolen by the enemy, the Philistines? God did. And as much as you think God has forgotten where his ark is, he knows right where it is. And as much as you think, well, God made a mistake, the Philistines should have never been able to get that. Guess what? God knew exactly what he was doing. Because the conquering nation would believe that whoever won the battle, they won because their God was able to give them the victory. So when the Philistines stole the ark, they thought the Philistine God is greater than the Israelites' God. But the next morning, they got a revelation, didn't they? They stuck that ark in the temple of their God and thought, well, now that Israelite God is going to worship at the feet of our God. But when they opened that temple the next day, Dagon was on the ground. <laughs> And they prop their God back up much like you do when your God falls in the presence of Jehovah. And they prop their God back up and close the door. And the next morning, Dagon was down again. <laughs> I want to tell you, if this was a wrestling match, Dagon's getting close to being counted out because now he's on the ground and his head is broke off and his hands are broke off. I want to tell you, God may be in an idol's temple, but he knows how to work even in the midst of idolatry. You say, well, Pastor Gene... What about, what about God moving here and God moving there? And is that real and is this real? I want you to know God can move anywhere. 
I'm telling you now, God can move anywhere. Somebody uh, mentioned to me a few days ago, said, have you seen this? This, and I, for sake of, I, I don't want to disparage anything, but somebody said, have you seen this revival going on? And so, you know, it's amazing, and it's, it's 10 days now, and maybe more now, and have you seen this revival going on? I'm like, well, I hadn't noticed, but I'll, I'll check it out. And so I go on, and I, I start reading, and, and somebody asked me, Brother Gene, have you seen this revival? And I said to him, I said, well, just to be honest, it sounds like Sunday morning at the Apostolic Church is what it sounds like. They're saying, oh, it's a revival. People are raising their hands. Well, it's happening all over this place. They say, oh, there's people speaking in tongues. It's happened here today. I want to tell you, God's pouring his spirit out everywhere. I said he's, he's falling everywhere. Oh, somebody clap your hands under the Lord. God is moving everywhere. Oh, somebody praise him right now. And if you're going to worship God today, the only way you can join in and, and move into that throne room is also with two that covered their face. There has to be a reference, a, a hiding of our face before God, where we say, Lord, I reverence you. I submit to you. See, if we're not careful, if we walk with God for very long, we get familiar with God. Anybody hearing me now? It's almost like we think, well, I'm hanging out with the boys. It's JC and the boys. Jesus Christ and the boys. JC and I are cool. No, he ain't cool with that. He's the mighty God of heaven and earth. He deserves your reverence. And if you're going to really worship him today, maybe that's why you had not gotten into a place of worship is because he's your cool buddy that's going to go cruising with you later today. But I want to tell you, he's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. And if I'm going to worship him correctly, I've got to cover my face. I, I may not even see what he's doing. I may not understand his ways, but I want to worship him today. He's the God that brought me out of darkness into marvelous light. He's the God that healed me when I was sick. Come on, I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying because my battery's about dead. Both of them, the one in here and the one in here. Some of you may not know, but many years ago when I was evangelizing and we didn't have any children. If you've been around here very long, you've heard this story, but for the sake of the young folks, I think we need to repeat the stories. We were traveling full time. My wife was traveling and she started losing weight and couldn't eat, started having health problems. And we thought it was just a flu or something and then it got worse and, and uh, couldn't hold food down, couldn't eat. So we began to think about going to a doctor. We didn't have a physician, we were young folks. And so I, I called my pastor and he recommended a, a doctor there in, in my hometown. And so we went and uh, we didn't get a good report that day. Uh, in fact, they wanted me and Cheryl to come back in two weeks. And they were going to, if, if the test, they sent one test off to Houston to MD Anderson. But all the preliminary tests that in the office that were done showed that we were in a battle with cancer. And uh, they said in two weeks we're going to, if these tests come back to confirm what you're battling, uh, we're going to do a complete hysterectomy. And we were 24 years old, didn't have any kids, just trying to follow after God. Well, you, you know I got kids now, so <laughs> I remember those two weeks being the longest two weeks of my life. I remember reading scripture just to settle my mind and my heart. I remember standing on the word of God. I remember saying, Lord, I don't know where you are, but I'm trusting you. We went back in two weeks and 
and she it seemed like she was longer in the in the examination room and I was more nervous by the moment and and it seemed like a, a eternity and finally she came out of the the, the examination room and and uh, she was paying the bill writing the check and her eyes were red and uh, and I'm, I'm sorry let me get ahead of myself uh, the doctor came out actually at this this visit came out and called me back to the office and we sat down and I thought oh boy here it comes and there was stacks of paperwork and and file folders and and uh, the doctor said uh, well, Mr. Gene, this is the test here. This pile of tests is what we ran last week. And we got the test back from Houston that confirmed what we found two weeks ago. But the doctor said, I don't know why, but I just decided to run all these tests again. And this is the stack that we just got through running again. And she said, and I was sitting there and I bow before the Lord. She said to me and Cheryl, she said, uh, all I can tell you is it looks like this is a completely different person that I ran these tests on. She said this person walked out with a bad report. But, but I don't see any sign of cancer. I don't, I don't see what I saw two weeks ago. I want to tell you if you're going to worship God with two he covered his face Lord I don't know what you're doing I don't know how you work but I love you you are my God when I can't see the way you are the way with two he well you know what happened I lying devil she started losing weight again and you know we we're a few months released from this doctor's report and you know we we're all happy the Lord healed and it was a great testimony but then all of a sudden she starts losing weight again and she starts having almost exact same symptoms and and uh, I thought you lying devil I'm not letting you steal my miracle I, she said, I don't know what to do. I said, I know what I know what we're doing. We're going right back to that same doctor that told us that God healed you. <laughs> so I went right back to that same doctor. She went in there in examination room. In a little while she came out. This is where she's paying the bill at the nurse's state, the little window there. She's paying the bill. Her eyes are uh, bloodshot, swollen. She's crying. She couldn't hardly get her breath. She's writing a check, and I'm saying, what's the matter? What did the doctor say? She said, I'll tell you when I get outside. What's the matter? I'll tell you when I get outside. No, tell me now. No, I'll tell you when I get outside. She's writing the check. She couldn't get it fast enough. I was, I didn't know what was going on. I hurried to the door, opened the door, went outside. I said, what in the world's the matter? She said, oh, I'm not sick. <laughs> well, I'm sick. I got morning sickness. <laughs> she said, <laughs> We're going to have a baby. Well, you know as well as I do that it wasn't just one baby. It was two babies, 19 seconds apart. Now, I'm telling you now, there's sometimes you're worshiping and you can't see anything. But I want you to know God is faithful even when you can't see the way. Come on, I said God is working even when you can't see it. God is moving in even when you don't know it. Oh, clap your hands unto the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Each one had six wings. With two, they covered their face. I can't see much, but I'm going to worship anyway. I know he's God. I know he can make a way. I choose not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And with two, he covered his feet. Notice. They are not seeing anything, nor are they watching where they are going. With two, they covered their feet. They did not depend upon themselves. 
They allowed God to choose their path. I cover my way. I cover my desires. I cover my path. Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do. There's the story of Amaziah, the king of Judah, in the word of God in 2 Chronicles. He's 25 years old when he began to reign. The Bible said he did what was right, but not with a perfect heart. Now study that. He did what was right, but not with a perfect heart. The Bible says he installed a leadership structure. He installed captains over hundreds, thousands. And then he hired, listen, he hired a hundred thousand mighty men that could handle a sword and a spear for a hundred talents of silver. Listen. And in 2 Chronicles 25 verse 7, But there came a man of God to him saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee, for the Lord is not with Israel to wit with all the children of Ephraim. But if thou wilt go, do it. Be strong for the battle. God shall make thee fall before the enemy, for God hath power to help and to cast down. And Amaziah said unto the man of God, But what shall I do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. <laughs> Did you hear that? I know you try to fix it all. We got some control freaks. We need to start a life group in this church called Control Freaks. <laughs> Now, there may only be one person in there, and that's me. But I will say this. For all of us that like to figure it out and get all the pieces in the right place, Amaziah said, I know how I can win this battle. If I pay enough people enough money, then I'll be secure. But the man of God said, don't count on that, Amaziah. The Lord is able to give you more. So when you got it all figured out and you've got all your plans stacked up, just remember that you may be shortchanging yourself, that only God can give you more than you could even dream of. Let me ask you a question. Can you give God an empty sheet of paper and write on the top of it, Lord, what would you have me to do? All your plans and all your all your, uh, the path of your life, these angels were true worshipers. And with two, they covered their face. And with two, they covered their feet. No, not all the Bible stories turn out like we expect. There are times when no matter how hard we pray, nothing happens. The same God that healed my wife of cancer it's the same God that I was praying to between the coke machine and the snack machine when my stepfather was battling with cancer and just a few hours from leaving this world and I prayed God you're able to heal his body I anointed him and prayed for him just like I pray for anybody but for some reason nothing happened if it happens for one God wanted it to happen for and it doesn't happen for others. In fact, if you got questions about that, read Hebrews chapter 11. For there are some that were delivered from the mouths of the lions, and there were some who were eaten by the lions. There were some that were delivered from the first persecutor, and there were some that were sawn in half and persecuted and martyred for the name of the Lord. We cover our feet by trusting him. Lord, if I'm going to worship you, I've got to trust you with all of my heart. Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called 
called them he also justified and who he justified them he also glorified <laughs> what shall we then say to these things if God be for us <laughs> who can be against us <laughs> with two I'm covering my feet Lord, you know the way that I take. Lord, my life is in your hands to worship you. I've got to not only fear you, I've got to trust you. Somebody say amen. amen. And then the Bible says with two, they did fly. With two, they covered their face. They couldn't see very clearly. With two, they covered their way, their path, their desires, their ambition, their direction. And with two, they did fly. Praise God. With two, they did fly. I have to say today <laughs> that while the praise singers were singing and the choir was singing, I have, to, I have to let you know that I too have flown a little this morning. Yeah, I got above the clouds of despair. I got above the clouds of worry and discouragement. I got above the trouble, I got above the fear. And you're in the presence of the Lord today. And God wants to take you to a brand new place of anointing and spiritual renewal. The Bible says they reverenced God. They trusted God. And that caused them to begin to fly. Now I want you to know wings are appendages for movement. God doesn't want you staying where you are. He doesn't want to leave you like you are. Oh, now. <laughs> I can't put it any better way, but you walked in this morning, but God wants to send you out flying this morning. You stumbled in the house of God today, but God wants to send you out with wings this morning. Oh, somebody clap your hands unto the Lord today. Lord. I wonder if there's anybody here today that, that fears God. You know he's on the throne. He's in control of your life. And you know that your path is surrendered to him. But today you're here to worship him. You're here to rise above all the worry. You're here to rise above all the fear and discouragement. I wonder if you're here today. I don't have the time to tell you how many aches and pains I got. I know some people wear that like a, like a new stripes in the military. Every time they get another doctor's report, they sew another stripe on. We got four star generals here. Not because they got health problems. <laughs> Anybody hear me now? You know what I noticed? I noticed me telling you all my aches and pains doesn't change a thing about it. <laughs> you know what I do notice? That when I start telling you mine, I leave you so depressed because you start telling me yours. And then I start thinking, man, we sound like a bunch of old people sitting drinking coffee talking about the pills we take and the shots we give ourselves. Now, I'm not saying we can't get help and, you know, tell somebody, hey, I'm battling this pain or that pain. But, but you know what? I'm not going to let my hip problems keep me on the earth today. I'm not going to let my pains and aches keep me from flying today. I'm going to rise up. I'm going above the trouble. 
I'm going above the worry. I'm going above the family problems. I'm going above the work problems. I'm going above the church problems. I'm going into the presence of the King of Kings. Some people wait to fly until their kid runs to the altar and prays through. Boy, they fly around the room then, don't they? But what about today when you can't see the way and you don't know what step to take next? Can you still rise up and say, I'm going to worship him. I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to rise to obey him today because he is good and he is worthy. And with two, they did fly. Oh, come on, let's stand together and clap our hands under the Lord today. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. I wonder right now if you could lift your hands and begin to worship the Lord. I wonder if you could realize today you too have two wings with which you can fly. You can worship Him. You can magnify Him. You can rise above the worry. You can rise above the fear. Come on, God is not the author of confusion. I rise to worship you, Lord. I rise to give you praise. Before you answer, I'm going to worship. Before I hear, I'm going to worship. Before I know, I'm going to worship. When I don't understand, I'm going to worship. There's a lot of things that would try to keep you on the ground this morning. But with two, they covered their face. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they did rise up. (laughs) The enemy would like to convince you, you have no wings for flying. (laughs) You don't know what God's doing. You don't know what path you're on. You're not even aware of the direction you're traveling. But I want you to know today, you can worship him. I remember years ago, I told our staff about it. I still remember the staff meeting. I still remember it like it was yesterday. I was headed out to the hospital to see somebody, and I happened to go past the reservoir. It was in the middle of the winter. I think it was February. That entire reservoir was frozen over. It's really cold. And you know how? We got some geese feeders in our community. In spite of all the signs that say don't feed the geese, we got some undercover geese feeders. So the geese were out there in our drinking water. All on the ice walking around and they all look the same they all you know look pretty healthy they all walking around but all of a sudden I don't know what startled them but all of a sudden no I, I do remember there was another uh, another uh, flock of geese that, that come flying over they weren't on the on the frozen lake and come flying over and some of those geese that were on that frozen lake decided it was time for them to fly so they they got up off of the ground start flying you know how they do when they're rendezvous and they start circling and and they start gaining a little altitude and I noticed then there was one goose bless his heart he had a broken wing and I watched him for a while he'd run and one wing would just get after it and he'd get a lift on that side and he'd start kind of doing this and he'd come back down I watched him struggle and struggle I heard his friends encouragement they were honking get up but he had a broken wing he couldn't ever light out like his 
his friends were flying off and he was left alone and I thought now somebody's got to do something that happened not long ago out here in the back there was a bald eagle out here behind the church and brother Kyle or I think or Amanda they actually went out there to see if they if something was wrong and they said they got right up on it and it had a broken wing so they called the animal control or the, the whoever it was Good thing they didn't call some of us. We'd have had it barbecued. And, <laughs> and then we'd all been in jail. <laughs> I want to tell you today, wings are for lifting. <laughs> wings are for going somewhere. And I came to church today to go somewhere. Can I say today, I'm not sure why you all came, but I know today I needed church. I needed to spread those two wings and rise up a little bit. I needed to get above all the things that worry my mind. Oh, I I needed to rise up. And when God's people began to sing and worship, something in my spirit begins to desire to take flight. There's a poem, there's a poem by Victor Hugo that's simply entitled The Bird. And it goes like this, be like the bird who pausing in his flight on limbs too slight feels it give way beneath him, yet he still sings knowing he has wings. I know some of you have landed on some precarious places, but keep on singing because you got wings. You can rise up above the problems. You can rise up above the worries. You can rise up above the despair. Come on, right now, reach over and pray for somebody beside you. Come on. I feel God speaking to somebody. I know you don't know the future, but come on, with two, they cover their face. I know you don't know the end of the path, but with two, they cover their feet. I know you don't know how you can ever rise above what has got you bound, but I want you to know with two, they did fly. If you get in the presence of the Lord, He is able to bring you out. He is able to bring you through. He is able to bring you over. Come on, I'm opening the altar for somebody that just wants to forget about everybody else. And you want to come and enter into the presence of the Lord. And you want to come and worship Him today. You want to say, Lord, my life is yours. Lord, my path is yours. Lord, my mind is yours. Lord, my way is yours. And with two, they did fly. Come on, somebody rise up. Make your way to an altar and say, I'm rising above my fear. I'm rising above my worry. I'm rising above my my confusion. Come on. Come on. I know there's more of you. I know there's more of you. Come on. If you'll come and worship him, come on. He is seeking such to worship him. I love you, Lord. I worship you, Jesus.
that says my feet are going to match my heart. I'm going to draw near. I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming for my children. I'm coming for my friends. I'm coming for that one that I've been praying for. I'm lifted up. Come on, he's here. Come on, rise up. Come on, rise up today and worship him. Oh, you are king of kings and lord of lords. Come on, I wish the saints of God, I wish the saints of God would raise a shout of worship. Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, fill the house with the faith of worship.
praise your name, Lord. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. We worship your name, O oh Lord. You are worthy, Jesus. Oh, I feel your presence, O oh God. You are in this place, Lord. Break down every wall, O oh Lord. Help us, Lord. To enter into your presence, O oh Lord. Oh, let there be spontaneous worship in this place, O oh God. You are seeking worshipers, Lord. You are seeking worshipers. The hour is come and now is when the true worshipers shall worship in spirit and in truth. Oh, hallelujah. I give you all the glory. I give you all the glory. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. So we're going to give. I want to tell you what worship can do. That little lady comes to the Lord with her request. She is not of the house of Israel. And the Lord lets her know it's not her time. It's not her day. Your day is coming, but it's not right now. She says, Lord, my daughter is sick. And the Lord says to her, it's not me to give the children's bread to dogs. He says to her, it's not your time yet. You'll get the crumbs here in a few weeks. It's not appropriate for me to take the bread from the children and give it to the dogs. 
but the Bible states then she came and worshipped him and said truth Lord but even the dogs deserve the crumbs from the master's table she worshipped and you know what she oh praise God and only Jesus can do this because he's God He says, I haven't died yet. I haven't closed the door on the children yet. I'm still here for the children. I'm still reaching for the children. My focus is on the children. But pardon me just a minute. I'm going to step all the way around the cross. I'm going to go do something for this woman before it's her time because she came and worshiped me. <laughs> I want to tell you right now, God is able to do something before the time because you worship him. He's able to move a mountain because you worship him. He's able to lift you above despair because you worship him. Come on, somebody worship. You're worthy. You're my God. You're the King of kings. You're the Lord of lords. My life is yours. My mind is yours. My heart is yours. Come on. Rise up. With two they did fly. I want to tell you it's beautiful when you get there. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I'm just so excited today. <laughs> I'm, I'm pumped. I'm just pumped. I've left the airport. <laughs> it was snowing, raining, wind blowing, dark, cloudy. In fact, I've been in the pilot's chair and punched through those clouds. And the closer you get to those clouds, the more turbulent it gets. And you get in that cloud, you can't see a thing. And that, that old ship starts shaking and vibrating. You start looking at those instruments. But I want to tell you, it's not very, it seems like forever, but it's just a few seconds or maybe a minute or two. And you punch through those clouds. And all of a sudden you see the sunlight. And all of a sudden you're in the smooth air. Oh. oh. I want to tell you the Lord wants to take you above the storm. He wants to get you above the worry. Oh yes. Man, I wish I was. I wish I was 29. But I'm not. Those days have come and gone. But I'm telling you now, I'm thankful to be in church today. <laughs> and my feet may still be on the ground. But I want to tell you in my spirit, I'm up above all the clouds of worry. Amen. I'm up in the sunshine. I'm up in the rare air. <laughs> God's in control. He's making a way. He's working his work. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, thank you, Lord. Oh, let's thank the Lord for his word today. I thank you, Jesus. tell you one thing one reason I'm I wish I was 29 is because now I'm almost 60 and when I eat my nose runs when I sleep my nose runs when I preach my nose runs when I'm minding my own business my nose runs my God I'm gonna have to start bringing a towel up here 
Well, I want to tell you now, my nose running is not going to keep me out of the thin air. I'm, I'm going to rise up. I'm going to worship God. And there's enough in this world that will hold us down. But I'm thankful that the worshipers have two wings with which they can fly. <laughs> well, I preached enough, so thank y'all for being in church today. Anybody can see a little clearer now? I feel like my pastor's wife, I feel like just about, I don't know if Sister Sherry knows it, but I, and it's not a church song, Sister Judy, but at least it's not a country western song. <laughs> I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. <laughs> I spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar up to the heavens through the open door. Oh, I believe I can fly. I'd sing it. I wouldn't have a band, though. They'd think I was backslid and they'd leave on me. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I believe I can fly. Hey, I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them these wings weren't made for walking. These wings were made for flying. So get up. Turn your neighbor and tell him, get up. Why stand you here till we die? Let's, let's get up. This is a day the Lord hath made. I'll rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Isn't God good? Well, that's all I got. So I'll let you go get what KFC has. May God richly bless you. Thank you for being in church today. Be sure and greet our guests. Tell them you're glad they're here today and tell them our pastor gets crazier than this sometimes. God bless you in Jesus' name. <laughs>